And I'm glad you, everyone can join us today on a Sunday afternoon. What better way to start off with having ramen on a Sunday afternoon? Um, me, typically, I'm generally um, usually not here on Sundays, but it's kind of like my ramen day as well. So they said, you know what, why not do it on a Sunday? It's great for us to all be here um, starting off with ramen. Our ramen 101 class we wanted to talk about is because of the popularity features that we have here in the United States about ramen now and lately last over three to five years the trend of ramen has very much skyrocketed this was you know founded a long time ago in Japan and you know for most of us we kind of remember myself too it was one of those college dorm foods that used to come in those instant packages right so again from there it made a lot of step up and then we wanted to kind of feature this so that everybody here in Orlando has got a little bit of an idea of what real ramen is and by making that happen a lot of us you know we depend on our suppliers and our vendors and the craft artisans that actually create these noodles and a little bit of the history of it. So that's why we kind of present to you the Ramen 101 tonight, uh, today. And we're going to be talking about the noodles. And they're all different types of noodles with the ramens. Um, they're all essentially the same ingredients. Um, and then I have a friend back here, uh, Mr. Masa Kamimoto, who is my uh, distributor for the ramen noodles from Wismatech. Um, him and I, we work very closely in not only bringing ramen noodles, but a lot of Japanese ingredients here to Florida, to Orlando. Um, and, and so that makes us a lot you know, easier to work with because a lot of these things, we work with a partnership with, the, with our vendors to get these products. We can't get the products. It's very difficult for us to create these things here and so a lot of the times we've always asked each other for a lot of help on these things um, and so uh, without taking any time from Masa I wanted to him to explain to him uh, about the ramen noodles and also a little bit about his company a little history about sun noodles as well too so please welcome Masa Kamimoto my name is Masa I work for a Japanese food uh, distributor named With Meda and actually our company has uh, over 100 years history and then providing uh, high quality Japanese food import from Japan and then uh, distribute to all over the US market. Actually, our company has uh, over, uh, 20 branches in USA and Canada. And then uh, here in Orlando, we opened a new uh, warehouse in 2000, uh, 2016, so two years ago, and distribute to uh, uh, mostly a Japanese restaurant in Florida. And then of course, uh, ramen noodle uh, is one of our popular products, and then uh, we uh, buy the ramen noodle from a company named uh, Sun Noodle, and then uh, distribute to uh, many Japanese restaurants, especially uh, Morimoto restaurant, help uh, distribute and uh, make it popular a lot. So, um, I'd like to explain about uh, Sun Noodle, the manufacturer of the ramen noodle company. Actually, the San Nudo uh, Ramen Company was established in 1981, so it's about 37 years ago in Hawaii. And because Hawaii has a lot of Japanese population, so um, a lot of Japanese people love to eat ramen even 37 years ago. And then now the uh, ramen is getting popular and popular, so the San Nudo now has uh, two more new factories, one in California and one is in New Jersey and then uh, our company uh, bring, uh, buy uh, ramen noodle from a New Jersey factory and then selling to the uh, Florida market now so um, I want to explain how to make the uh, uh, noodle noodle actually only have uh, four ingredients wheat flour water salt and country you know what is kansui? Okay. It's a mix of the uh, sodium carbonate and the potassium carbonate and it gives the uh, noodle more texture and also uh, flavor, the ramen flavor and the ramen color. So without kansui, the uh, noodle is just, uh, we call it the udon, the other uh, Japanese noodle. So if we use the kansui, it's going to be the ramen. Without kansui, it's going to be a udon. So that's the difference. And how to make the noodle is very easy. Just mix up those uh, four ingredients and then make, uh, make a big dough and spread the seed, roll up, and then just cut. It's pretty much easy. Of course, like company like a sun noodle, the big uh, manufacturer, they're using a big machine. So uh, they can make the uh, noodle Pro, uh, pro, uh, approximately about 90,000 servings per day 
in the United States as of today. So you can guess a lot of the uh, people uh, eating the ramen in this country already. So uh, the ramen has a long uh, history in Japan and the first ramen restaurant opened in Tokyo was uh, 1910. So over 100 years ago. And then uh, ramen was getting popular and popular in Japan and especially after World War II, uh, Japan was still uh, not a rich country. So we have to import a lot of ingredients from outside of the country. And Japan imported a lot of wheat flour from America and then started making the noodles. And then uh, people started to eat more and more noodles and then uh, like 1970, the economy gets better, and then Japan started to make a lot of the things. And one of the unique things is the instant noodle. Japan start to make instant noodle, and then start to export to America. And of course, our company is one of those uh, exporting company, and then uh, bring to the America. Maybe you can, uh, you may know, Nishin. Cup noodle is one of the uh, uh, acceptable, uh, very popular noodle in this country. And then uh, after that, more and more people in America start to eat the ramen noodle. And then uh, now, uh, because more and more, uh, more and more people start to eat the ramen, so uh, sun noodle getting uh, busier and busier. And then of course, our company gets busier and busier. So that's the history of the ramen. And Actually, in Japan, uh, we use uh, many different types of noodle, many different types of uh, soup base. And especially today, we present the four different kinds of noodle. For example, um, this noodle uh, is good with the shoyu ramen or shio ramen. And we call this is a Tokyo wavy noodle. And also, um, we call this number is we call this number 24. <laughs> number 24. Maybe you don't know what's number 24 meaning, but I want to explain. When they make the noodle using a ramen cutter, this noodle go with the 24 holes, 24 lines, and make the noodle. So this is kind of national standard, and this is like number 24, good with the shoyu ramen or shio ramen, and. For the, uh, oh, the shoyu ramen is uh, actually very popular in Tokyo area. And for example, uh, next one is like this. Uh, this noodle is a little bit thick. This one is number 22. A little bit thick. If the number gets lower, the noodle gets thicker. Number gets bigger, higher, noodle is more thinner. Miso, uh, this noodle is number 22, is good with uh, uh, miso ramen. Miso ramen is most, uh, more likely the north part of Japan, like Sapporo, Hokkaido. They love to use those types of noodles. Third one is uh, this thin noodle. <laughs> this one is uh, more likely the west side of Japan. Uh, eating this noodle, using this noodle. It goes, uh, goes very well with uh, tonkotsu ramen, which is a uh, uh, fork base, the ramen noodle. And then uh, this one, number is 28. Number 28. You notice it's a lot thinner and it's very unique, but I myself too have found this out you know, for the first time because we're looking at boxes and they got all these numbers. So a lot of the times, you know, we get confused as well, too, because they're both wavy, they're both noodles, they're both yellow. How do we tell the difference, right? So the numbers was what he explained to us, too. So even for us, again, this is one of those very important things of learning a lot of these noodles about how, you know, the history of it, but also the other side of it about the noodles and how the uh, extruding of the noodles come out. And that's the difference of those numbers, as you as Joss was explaining. So uh, this noodle, as you can see, is very thick. This one uh, in Japan, in Japan, we use for tsukeme. It's a dipping style. So this this type of the thick noodle is always 
very good match with the uh, dipping style noodle. And by the way, this number is number 18. So maybe if you go to a Japanese restaurant or a ramen restaurant, when you eat the noodle, and then you can guess what's the number of the ramen, probably you can ask the uh, restaurant owner, hey, what's the number of this? Yeah. So maybe the, they will think, oh, you guys are very uh, familiar with the ramen noodle. So today, maybe you can learn, this is like number 28, this is number, 22, uh, number 24, number 22, number 18. So, like those uh, ramen has uh, a lot of uh, different types. So I believe today uh, you can enjoy a uh, lot of the uh, different types of noodles. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So with Sun Noodle, as uh, Masa was explaining about it back in 1980s, um, I started off my own career uh, in the kitchen field right around 1996. And my first restaurant that I've ever worked at was a ramen noodle shop out in Hawaii. I was, I was born in Japan, raised in Hawaii, um, and Sun Noodles was always around us. And it was just a small company. I mean, these guys were literally a family-owned, operated res uh, group that was making noodles, wonton wrappers, gyoza wrappers, in Hawaii, we, they were also making a lot of the uh, Hawaiian-style noodles called saimin, which was the originating of the ramen noodles, but done in Hawaii. Shrimp-based broth, thin noodles, and so kind of like, kind of mingled all of the Pan-Pacific Asia together to make one, and then so Hawaii created the noodles called saimin. And so they started off with branching out with selling to local restaurants in Hawaii, a lot of Japanese restaurants, and then with the popularity in California, with a lot of Japanese uh, people there as well too, the ramen noodles were starting to become more of the popular items. So traditional Japanese style ramen came about. They opened up a factory in, in California, branched out into the mainland United States, and then out in New Jersey, right about five years ago? Six, yeah, uh, six years ago. Six years ago. And then they started going out all throughout the East Coast of the United States. So, you know, how that all that kind of ranges from a small family owned operating company to going out to where we are right now. The popularity you can tell has grown tremendously so um, without further ado I know you guys are all getting hungry here um, you smell the broth and everything I want to introduce you to my executive sous chef mr. Daniel Mallet we call him chef Danny um, he's very as you can see he's very uh, friendly personable he smiles a lot he's also got a strong passion about ramen He's been overseeing our ramen over here uh, and other stations as well too, but predominantly on the ramen station for us here and had created a lot of the new ramens for us, uh, for you guys to taste today, uh, four particular new ones. He'll be describing the ramen. And then also I have uh, Mr. Brandley over here who is our head bartender that's gonna be talking about the pairings of the ramen. And we always figured out like, well, how can ramen pair with beverages? You know what, you'll be surprised with a lot of the beer flavor profiles and the sake that we got to offer today to go very well. So, Jeff? Good. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for coming out today. Uh, first off, we're going to start with the skimming ramen. So, traditionally, they use, uh, for skimming, they make, they use pork to make a, like a pork base for the soup. But for this one, we use the tuna bone. So, it has a more of a seafood flavor. <coughs> It's uh, not as, not as uh, thick as the pork, but it still has a strong feel in your mouth from the tuna bones itself. Um, so this one's more lighter, but it has a lot more flavor to it. A lot more flavor. A lot of good flavor. And the noodle we're using for that is the temomi noodle. It's a little thicker, so grab all the soup and get all the flavor of the soup in your mouth. Also. <laughs> Uh, Chef so, Andy, oh, yeah. sorry. Uh, describe to us about the, you know, so the skimmin, uh, they, you saw this, the Timomi ramen is the thicker one. Does anybody know what the meaning of skimmin is? No? And how to eat skimmin? Okay, this is a very unique one. It's not like your traditional ramen uh, where the soup and the, the noodles are all together. Chef Danny? So, the, yeah, like Chef Yui said, they're not together. So, the noodles are going to be served separate on the side in the soup separately in a bowl. So, what you do is you take the noodles dip into the soup itself and then you just slurp little by little so you get the uh, I don't know how to explain it but <laughs> <laughs> but it's a separate it's, it's like a dipping noodle yeah dipping noodle yeah right the contrast of it is that it's the soup is a lot more thicker it's a little bit more dense than their regular ramen noodles so you don't really end up drinking the broth 
of the skimmit. It's a dipping sauce broth, so that one you don't want to really drink all the broth on it. As you dip it, the noodles coat, and then you enjoy the ramen. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we actually bring in a uh, whole tuna in over here and we keep uh, our bluefin tuna that we get a sustainable bluefin tuna. We get these bones, these massive, massive bones of the carcass of the tuna bones. And then so we were playing with that idea one day. I was like, hey, what if, can we make a ramen broth with this? In between each of the tuna bones, there's a little packs of like the jelly of the tuna, which melts down into the broth and it makes this really rich viscosity, um, just as if it was like breaking down, is cooking with pork bones. So when we tried it a couple times, it was like, wow, this is really good. And we've been featuring for our omakase when we do occasionally for, uh, for the last courses so that people are always surprised that, wow, you can actually use the whole entire tuna. Yes, we do use the whole entire tuna pretty well. So, And uh, Brantley, with the right. pairing, please. Uh, so for our pairing for the first uh, one, we're going to do the Goose Island Sophie, which is a, uh, a Belgian-style farmhouse ale. It's going to be a little bit more effervescent than your average beer, which has a nice uh, palate cleansing property, uh, along with the tartness of it being a farmhouse style. Um, so that way you can kind of, you know, with a, a broth like this, with a dish like this, uh, there's so many layers to it. We want you to be able to kind of cleanse your palate so that on your second bite, maybe you taste a, a different element that you didn't notice on the first bite, and so on and so forth. The Skimmin Station is going to be located in our private dining room on the far left-hand side of us, uh, in the dining room over there. So right over there will be the Skimmin. Okay, so next ramen to talk about is the Shio ramen. Shio means uh, salt, so it's a more salt-based ramen. Um, very light taste. It's clear, a clear broth. Um, very light. It's a curly noodle. Right here. <coughs> Almost look the same, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's curly noodle right here. And this is more your traditional, you know, I think it dates back more to the Chinese from China when they brought it over to, moved to Japan, the ramen itself. So it's more... Not as dense, not as, I don't know how to say, not as smoky, but it's uh, like a clear taste in your mouth. Okay? The thinner noodles, uh, again, they help when you're having something with a, such a light broth um, that's not as viscous as the skimmin broth. So that's why when you use the thinner noodles on those elements, it actually coats it really nicely without it having to overwhelm the soup. Because the balance, just like sushi, ramen is all about the balance. Same thing. So you need the texture of contrast with the noodles and the broth itself. So when you slurp it, it's it's okay to slurp, right? For yeah. those guys that don't know, ramen is okay to slurp. You want to slurp the noodles. So um, the thinner noodles on that one is the one that we're using for the shio ramen. Yes, and the shio ramen is very, it's uh, citrus. So since we're in Florida, usually the pork is uh, cooked in soy sauce based, you know, ingredient, liquid. Uh, for this one, we did more with citrus citrus braids so it's gonna be a little bit more uh, fruity but it goes well with the salt together okay. uh, and our beer pairing for that is uh, it's, it's a ramen beer from Mikkeler which is a, uh, a Danish brewer out of Copenhagen uh, it's a beer that they specifically made to pair with ramen um, it actually has a yuzu element to it which is gonna kind of highlight and accent some of the uh, the citrus notes uh, of the, uh, the the pork shoulder marinade um, and that's made with Bretonum Britannomyces uh, yeast, so it's going to give it a little bit of a, for lack of a better word, barnyard flavor. It's going to give you some hay, uh, funk, they say sometimes, so it's going to hold up to uh, the full flavor of the ramen as well. One of the unique things about that beer is it, it became one of our chef's, uh, you know, the chef's beer that we enjoyed. Um, it's very difficult to get here in Florida, as I was told, and we actually bought out the last two cases or so, so it's very limited. You really won't see it around, so take a picture of the can. It's actually, the can's pretty cool, too, um, but, you know, enjoy it while you have it. It's one of our limited edition uh, elements that we are featuring today for our beverage. Okay, and next is uh, Tonkotsu. It's one of, one of my favorite ramens. The, the white straight thin noodle thin noodle um, so tokotsu is basically just pork bones uh, cooked for 12 hours 10 to 12 hours leave overnight just cook it let it boil and then you're going to extract all the flavor from the bone itself which will create make that creaminess the white white color of the stock um, we actually sell this one in the restaurant now which a lot of people love it but uh, this noodle goes very well with it. Since it's thin, it grabs all of the soup. All the soup attracts to the noodle, and you have all the good flavor of the soup itself. The okay. One of the classic uh, ramens that we feature here uh, at Morimoto Asia, and it's actually been our really most popular ramen here. 
um, you know, it's it's one of the classics based on the on the south side of Japan in the Kyushu Hakata region of it, and it's it's one of the more oldest uh, styles of ramen uh, in even in Japan as well too. Uh, so since it's such a traditional ramen, we wanted to kind of go uh, something else traditional for the pairing. So we're going to do a cedar aged sake. Uh, so before bottling became really a, an option for brewers in the 1900s, uh, sake was matured, it was housed, it was stored in uh, Japanese cedar. Uh, it's still kind of a traditional thing that they do now. Um, at the beginning of um, the sake season, uh, once they've completed the brewing, uh, they'll tap the uh, the cedar barrels. Uh, we have one right here behind us. This is uh, one of Chef Morimoto's uh, cedar barrels uh, for sake. So it's still kind of a big thing in like ribbon cutting ceremonies uh, when they kind of christen a new building. Um, Chef Morimoto does it every time he opens uh, one of his new restaurants on his Instagram. He's got pictures of him uh, tapping the cedar uh, sake barrel in uh, Dubai where he just opened a restaurant last week. Um, so, just kind of highlighting tradition to go with such a traditional ramen. Okay. And the last ramen we're doing is uh, miso ramen, which is uh, start on the north, north of Japan, um, Hokkaido region. But uh, actually, that one's gonna come. That's a curly noodle, also curly noodles. And that one's more of a, I would say, like it's more the strongest. I think strongest flavor of ramens. There's so much variation of uh, different flavors, like a saltiness, a little bit of sweet, a little bit of spicy, all at the same time. And we're serving this one with a, which we call it a, a spicy crab bomb. Usually they do it with uh, pork only, like a spicy pork bomb. They put it in the soup, makes it diff makes it more flavor. Ah, can't speak. We actually change this with a little bit of pork and crab mixed together, so it's gonna be a nice, nice variation. Yeah? Unique part about it is where Hokkaido and Sapporo region, um, crab is very much predominantly used and known. Miso is also one of those elements that is very known. So that's why Sapporo has established to have known for their regional ramen is known as the Miso Sapporo Miso Ramen. Um, those of you guys probably who are here probably are known of the Sapporo Ramen over at uh, on Colonial as well too. And they, you know, again, they're one of the traditional styles of miso ramen that they feature. Um, Chef Danny over here incorporated the crab element to kind of also feature that seafood, that umami, that extra umami that goes into the ramen. The balance between the meat and seafood always makes a big difference. And all of our ramens today actually, um, except for the shio, right? Yeah, except for the shio because you got a cleaner flavor. All of the elements have a balance between meat and seafood together. And then the crab should definitely bring out a lot more flavor profile sweetness to the miso. Okay. Uh, so we went with a classic pairing for a, a spicier ramen dish. Uh, we went with a tart beer. Um, the beer we decided to go with is part of Brooklyn Brewing's uh, quarterly experiment series. Um, it is called Kiwi's Playhouse. Uh, it is a sour beer and uh, part of the fermentation they do um, on kiwis. So you get a nice kind of kiwi note. Um, should complement the, the spice very well. So. Um, Forgot to mention all of the areas of the stations. The miso ramen, the last one we just, just talked about, will be right over here where uh, Emmer, our assistant general manager, is waving. Uh, it'll be right over there on that station. And then we have the shio ramen that's all the way back over by Amy back there in the corner. And then we have the tonkotsu ramen, which is in our private dining room over on the right-hand side of the, of the room. Um, again, all of the pairings will be at the specific stations. Uh, feel free, there is four different types of the ramen. We've made it small enough so that you can enjoy every single portion of it. Feel free to go back for seconds. We got plenty while supplies last, but um, you know, we, we do have a lot. So it's kind of like an idea. We started this idea to be having areas of little small sit down areas. Um, in Yokohama, in Shin Yokohama, in the new t part of Yokohama, there is the ramen museum. Um, I was very much inspired a long time ago when I was still uh, younger, uh, like in high school time. And my, my goal was to eat every single one of them. And they serve in pretty large, decent bowls. Even if it was a sample bowl, um, it, was, it was a lot. So we kind of shrunk it down a little bit more for you guys so that you guys can be able to finish all of them. But the idea is to kind of sit in front of that area. Uh, we have also the raw noodles and all of those stations too. So we have, you know, you can see the difference of the noodles. Uh, please feel free to sit down. A lot of the trash receptacles are there for your disposal of a lot of the disposable containers that we're serving the ramen in today. So, all right. Uh, 
Um, and then we have a little gift for you folks as you're leaving. Please see the hostess. She has a little gift bag. Uh, our friends over at Sun Noodle and Masa was able to provide us some of the ramen noodles for you to take home as well too. So we have the ramen number 24? <laughs> number 24. Number uh, 24 with a little small packet of the miso ramen base as well too in there. Uh, in there there's also little small pamphlets, exactly what we just talked about, about the ramen history. Um, each one, so there's little pamphlets that are in there for your uh, keep. And then we also have a little invite for next week. We have the Matsuri event that we're going to be hosting as well, too. That's going to be upstairs. Uh, same time uh, as today, uh, on, on Sunday, we're going to be featuring a lot of the traditional Japanese festivities uh, throughout our patio, crossing our fingers that it won't rain. Um, and so we'll have a lot of things uh, for that as well, too. And those are, again, available to purchase ticket-wise on the web uh, at morimotoasia.com. And you can purchase those tickets. It's a $45 ticket for unlimited food, unlimited beverages that we're serving that day. Um, if not, you can please feel free, come along, and then you can uh, purchase little single coupons as well too. So you're not obligated to uh, do all of them. So that you can actually purchase uh, those single coupon tickets as well too. So hope you can join us then. And besides that, please enjoy uh, some of our ramen today. Thank you. Thank you. Konnichiwa from Morimoto Asia and obviously we're here to celebrate not just the Sakura Festival and the Cherry Blossoms but this may be end up, this may end up being my favorite of all the festivals because it is clearly about all things ramen. There are four different stations. Maybe I'll take you along with me to one or two and give you an idea of, you know, I saw some of you commenting and thanks to all of you who are watching live and who are sharing this out. If you haven't shared yet, please invite your friends to come and be part of this because I never realized there were so many different types of ramens and the way to cook it and the different, you know, the bases of the broth and the sizes and the flavors of the noodles. So um, there's four different stations. Four different types of ramen. We're gonna go and sample. How exciting is this, right? You wanna say hi? So yeah, of oh, course. so so I, excited to be with Lou today. <laughs> Unbelievable. So introduce yourself. I'm Owen. I'm Hudson. Right from Western Canada, and we heard Lou was gonna be here today. We're so excited to try some ramen you with Lou. You heard ramen was gonna be here today. Hey, I just happen right, to be here both. Too. <laughs> to the chance to eat with Lou Mangiello, unbelievable. Oh, how exciting is this? This is so cool. I this didn't realize coolest. that there was like this so really many cool. different yeah. types and bases. Just get all these people out of the way. No, we gotta, we gotta, you know, we, we gotta have, eat. We got work to do. Um, all right, so where should we go first? Where do you want to head first? Where, where do you want to go? What do you want to try first? You're the tallest guy in the room, so okay. where's the shortest line? I think if we go to the right, you I think? think you're right. I think I'm, go I'm gonna follow you. Go ahead. Okay, let's you go. Lead the path. Sushi bar. I know. Amazing. Hello, my old friend. No, he's all about sushi. Is I, he? I'm, oh, trying, to learn. I'm trying to learn. He's all about it. We are. We just bonded in a big way right there. So, have you guys ever eaten here before? No. Oh, stop. No, we haven't. Oh, this is one of my favorite places. Is it? In, not just in Disney Springs, but anywhere. I mean, don't tell the boathouse, but it is. Um, okay. This uh, this used to be the old Mannequin's Dance Palace, like way back when. This was okay, a cool. there was a two story dance hall. Like this top floor was a rotating dance floor. Um, That's cool. And then yeah, it was this is where I used to spend my time back when it was Pleasure Island. But I'm a lot happier now that it's Good. a place that serves sushi and ramen. We should and, have got, uh, We had an amazing lunch in Splitsville here yesterday. Right? So people don't realize like the food's amazing. really good. Amazing. It should not have been that good. What you have? It was so good. I had. The sliders with the fillet, uh, steak fillet, and right. onion rings, and some horseradish, and it was insane how good it was. And what did you have at Splitsville? Mm, I had the sweet and sour chicken rice bowl. Nice. Yeah. Believe it or not, don't tell more. The sushi's actually really good there too. Yeah. The sushi's really good. Like it worked. 
Je but you know what else? You go downstairs, the street food, the more motor street food outside. You want to cook? Wait, you haven't had the ribs here yet, have you? No. Oh my God, you cannot go back okay. to Canada without actually having <laughs> okay. the. Uh, <laughs> right? Are the ribs not the best thing you've ever put? Like, it will okay. change your life. We'll try the life. ribs. We'll try the ribs. And if that you don't like good. them, I promise I'll finish them for you. Will you? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm a giver like that. I'll, okay, I'm happy that's to help you guys out. This is um, exciting. What's going to happen in here? But this is cool. Like, because we're really only really cool. getting like to learn about it and taste it, but we're seeing how they're doing it, like, right here on the line. Let's go watch. If you're turning late, it's made from the broth. It's uh, they take uh, pork bone to. Um, uh, I'm gonna run out of hands in about two seconds, so I'm gonna just hold it for you. No, that's all right. I'll go just. I'll keep my own other hand oh. free for the ramen, but I'll come back. Don't worry. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, so this Ace is. Sake. Oh, okay. I've never had. It's a little bitter, but it pairs well with the pork belly and the tonkatsu. Really interesting. Really interesting. Okay. Robert Johnson, what do we what do you do here? Melanie, you're right. I do need some sort of like additional arm attachment. <laughs> you need a walking tray. Okay. This one's for me? Yeah. Of course. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir. Chopsticks here for you, and also a spoon for the broth if you like afterwards. Okay. Look at these. Find a spot to This way we're closer to the ramen. Is it okay if we share a table with you folks? Okay. We just have to remember which ones we've eaten. Oh, I didn't grab a spoon. You guys, look at you two. Everybody knows the system. You didn't grab the... Want me to grab the sake for you too? Yeah. <laughs> Alright man, what do you think so far? Really good. Ramen guy? Uh, a little bit. More sushi, but. Yeah. He's a sushi guy. I like you already. 
love this. I grabbed you a sake just in case. Oh, so thank you. Okay. Oh, that's tasty. Isn't it? Oh, you're not going to like that. You might as well just oh, give that to me. Just give that straight to you? Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. How <laughs> oh, is it, Hudson? So good. <laughs> Does it taste familiar or unfamiliar? Mm. Mm. It has a job. It's got such a nice, like, smoky flavor to it. Which one is this? Question, where's our menu? This is the um, the tonkatsu, the pork. Tonkatsu. Oh, yeah, the noodles are very familiar from what we'd have, but it's the very taste. buttery. I don't, I don't have the, our really little good. menu yeah, no. with us. I'll take a taste of sake just you know for research purposes. <laughs> That's right, better. Mm. <laughs> Did you get that nice, big, mm, sweet? Delicious, tender <laughs> chunk of pork belly in there. So good. Wherever you are, I really do wish you were here because this is so good. It's it should not be this good. So good. You're really rubbing it in. <laughs> I'm just trying to bring the experience to them so that when you come here, you have to come for the different types of ramen. But that was really fascinating yeah. how... Um, the, the processes of creating the different ramen dishes and making the, the different ramen. Like now I'm going to go into a ramen shop and ask what number it is just so I sound like I know what I'm okay. talking about. That's right. That's, the, That's right. Okay. Mm. Really good. This is wonderful and delicious. And again, we're, we're trying four different types of ramen today. But listen, wherever you are, I really do wish you were here. And if you were going to be here next week, it is the final week of the Sakura Festival here at Morimoto Asia. Yeah, this way. So I don't bother everybody else. It is the final week of the Sakura Festival. How good is this, right? It's great. Which one did you, which one did you have? It's Michael Kell. Yep. Fancy yeah. meeting you here. Which one did you have so far? Had the uh, Mishiro. Okay. Very light, very good. Oh, it's so tasty. I'm so happy I wore my stretchy shorts today. Yeah. Um, but last week is the final week of the Sakura Festival where, I don't remember what it's called, but it's going to be sort of like an, uh, an all-afternoon uh, party, family-friendly, and there's games and obviously food as well. Um, thanks to all of you who are watching live. I am running out of hands, and I am uh, running out of patience because I'm so hungry and I can't get the ramen into me fast enough. I don't want to make you guys sit here and watch me eat all day, but I wanted to give you a little sample, a little flavor of what you can expect. And again, you can come to Morimoto Asia anytime and sample some of the many different types of ramen. Oh, by the way, get the ribs. Uh, if you are watching this live or on the replay, thank you so very much. Please do me a favor, share this out with your friends and your favorite group or page over on Facebook. And hopefully, I will see, eat with you here at Morimoto Asia soon. Thanks to Morimoto Asia for having me today. Thanks to Chef Morimoto, wherever you are. Hey, man, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> you too. And uh, Domo Origato, Chef Morimoto. See ya. Hey, grab some Kiwi's Playhouse.